Hello, my fellow fish fans. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about five saltwater diseases that nobody talks about when it comes to fish illness. But before we get into that, I just wanted to say that today's video is brought to you by teespring.com slash fishfan. So if you are a fish fan and you would like to support this channel, you can check out the t-shirts that we created over there. I'm wearing a t-shirt that I got from another fellow YouTuber. Um, it's one of the best ways that you can support channels and make them sustainable. Plus, it's how you can connect with other fish fans out there in the world. I was pretty proud of it. I worked pretty hard on the design. Now that that's over, let's go ahead and move in to my top five saltwater fish diseases that nobody really talks about. So what I find is that when people are talking about quarantine, when people are talking about um, fish disease, they are so focused on ick. ick marine ick. I'm talking about saltwater. I've done a lot of freshwater videos lately, so we'll talk about saltwater for a minute. Ick is the main thing that everyone gets really frustrated with, and it makes sense because ick is, it's got a very long life cycle, and it's what most people probably end up interacting with. Because if your fish get some of these other diseases, a lot of times they'll probably die before they even come to you. Whereas ick is something that fish can usually with a good immune system kind of fight through and then it becomes this never-ending battle in your fish tank. So most of the videos on YouTube are going to be about how to deal with marine ick and I think that's a really good thing. I think that that's awesome. But there are some illnesses that I think that we need to be thinking about as well. So these are the top five that I find people don't think enough about when they're thinking about quarantining. Um, number five is going to be marine velvet, and I put it as number five because people do talk about marine velvet. In my opinion, marine velvet is so much worse than marine ick because it wipes out a tank so, so quickly. It will wipe out a tank in hours. You'll have your whole tank gone in like a day, whereas ick is something that it might take quite a while before you even necessarily realize that you have a problem. Marine velvet looks very, very similar to ick. Um, the dusting on the fish is a little bit lighter in color, and a lot of times your fish will die of velvet before you even realize that there's a problem at all because they just suddenly start dying. Uh, velvet infects the gills uh, before it infects the body. And so a lot of times, if you have fish that are just dying very, very rapidly and you don't know why, it's velvet and they're just dying before you see the, the actual signs. So on the fish itself, it'll have like a light dusting. It looks similar to it, but more like a powdered sugar kind of look. And um, some surefire signs that it's velvet is one, all of your fish are dying, so yeah. Two is if you see the fish swimming into the power head, very likely that it's velvet. They're trying to clear their lung or their gills their lungs, their gills, um, because that's where it's infecting. And so they're trying to swim into the power head to try and get that out. Um, and another surefire sign that you have velvet is velvet is very sensitive to light. So if you have fish that are hiding quite a lot and then suddenly dying, that's a sign that you've got velvet. In my opinion, this is the worst thing that can happen in your fish tank. Now velvet is treatable in a few ways. If you just realized you had velvet, I would recommend doing freshwater dips immediately. It will not cure the velvet, but it will temporarily relieve the symptoms until you can get the medication. A lot of times by the time you realize you have velvet, it's too late for the fish that you see it. But you need to, you absolutely need to go fallow for velvet. It has a little bit of a shorter lifespan. Um, and I recommend a combination of actually both formalin baths and doing copper. So don't do formalin and copper in the same tank. And remember, only do copper in a quarantine tank. But give your fish a bath with a formalin dip. I like Riddick, I'll link it down below. And then after you give your fish a formalin bath, put them in a quarantine tank with copper. Um, it's, it's just a devastating disease. It's really, really, really devastating. A lot of times they'll also get secondary bacterial infections. So it's good to have, um, some kind of antibiotic sitting around as well. That's velvet. Um, number four, I guess I'm going backwards, is Brooklynella. Brooklynella can also very easily be confused with velvet <clears throat> or ick. Um, the surefire sign that you're looking at brook as opposed to these other ones is one, it's not going to be treatable by copper. Uh, copper will treat both, which is why if you're doing a quarantine procedure, copper is a really great way to go. 
There's some things I don't like about copper, but that's another conversation. Um, but it is treatable with formalin and similar to velvet. If you have Brooklynella, first thing you want to do, if say you don't have the, the meds around, is do a fresh water dip and do that, then do uh, the treatment. Now for for formalin or for brooklynella, sometimes it's called brook, it's also often called clownfish disease. You'll see it very commonly on clownfish, but there are other fish that t tend to be prone to it and any fish can catch it. Um, with brooklynella, one of the ways that you'll know is that your fish looks very mucusy. So they'll have the spots on it, just like they do with felt or with ick, but um, they'll look like they're just covered in slime. That's a good sign that you're probably looking at brook. All three of these can be really confusing and difficult to diagnose because they all look very similar. But brook and velvet kill very quickly, especially velvet. So I put those as number five and number four because people are talking about them a little bit. Um, but some of these other ones I find that nobody really talks about. So number three is lymphocytes. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. A lot of people will confuse it for ick. I've noticed that butterfly fish are very, very prone to lymphocytes. And basically what it is, is it's, you'll see it just on the fins and they look like little white nodules. It's not ick. They're kind of, uh, sometimes they'll be kind of asymmetrical and they'll only be on the fins. Uh, lymphocytes, there's no known cure that I'm aware of. Every time I try to look it up, I just find that we don't know how to cure it. Nothing seems to work. It does usually fall off with time. Um, so the best thing to do if you have lymphocytes is to go ahead and quarantine the fish and wait for it to fall off. Um, like I said, they're very, very prone to being on butterfly fish. I've seen, I can't think of a butterfly, a copper band butterfly at least, that I've seen in store that did not have lymphocytes. Um, some people will cut them off. Personally, it's I'm not a huge fan of that unless it gets really extreme. Just because, like I said, a lot of times these are on butterfly fish and it, it just seems really stressful for me. And most of the time fish will live through lymphocytes. It's not like velvet or something like that. But a lot of times people will see it and they'll think that it's ick. So if it's starting on the fins and it's um, not like salt but like nodule shape, it looks like little little teeny tiny uh, skin tags almost, probably looking at lymphocytes. Uh, number two, most common disease, or I guess it's not necessarily most common disease, but disease that nobody's talking about is uranema. Um, I will insert a picture if I can figure out how to do it on this editing software. I've been really struggling to figure out this editing software. But uranema is um, pretty bad, and I actually think I think I experienced it in my tank. It is a parasite similar to Brooklynella, Velvet, Ick. It doesn't look like them though. It looks almost like a, almost like a gash in my opinion in the fish. Um, and uranema is treatable by copper as well, I believe. So um, again, this is one of those things where if you take anything away from this video, it's quarantine your fish. And these diseases are why I pre-treat fish because it's just important. And a lot of these uh, illnesses like velvet are not going to be um, receptive to something like a tank transfer method or hyposalinity. Those only tend to treat ick. So uranema. Uranema is uh, probably the easiest way to treat it is again through copper. Uh, you can also treat it with something called chloroquine. Uh, chloroquine phosphate, I think it is. Um, and actually, chloroquine, I believe, will treat velvet and ick, I think. I think. But I'm just remembering this off the top of my head. The problem is, at least if you're in the United States, it's very difficult to get a hold of chloroquine. You usually have to get it from a vet. So most of the time, people are going to be using copper. So again, your copper will treat velvet, ick, and your anema. And you don't want any of that in your tank, which is why quarantine is so important. And then the last illness that I find people don't really talk about or you know you don't see a lot is called paravortex. Um, it's also known as um, tang disease or black ick. Very very common in tangs. I've experienced it. Um, also seems to be quite common in my experience at least with fox faces um, or rabbit fish. 
uh, what it is is it looks like pepper on your fish instead of salt. It's just little black spots on the fish. And it might just be that it's easier to see on something like a yellow tang or a fox face because um, they're, they're yellow, so you see quite a large contrast. The good news about Paravortex is that it's very easily treatable. Very, very easily treatable. Um, a lot of times doing a fresh water dip will help immensely. Um, I've seen hyposalinity work pretty well on Paravortex, which I'm, I might be mispronouncing any of these. So if I am, I'm sorry, I'm not a vet, but this is just from research. Um, but another thing that you can use if you have uh, black ick or tang disease is Prozipro. And to my knowledge, uh, Prozy Pro, which is Prozy Quintal, um, API General Girl also has Prozy Pro in it, or Prozy Quintal in it. To my knowledge, I believe that Prozy Quintal is a um, reef safe medication. Google that before you start dumping it in a reef tank. I don't want y'all to blame me if you kill all your corals, but to my knowledge, it is something that is safe to add to a reef tank, I think. And so that's something that you can treat directly in the tank. And I find that much like ick, usually fish will live through it. It's not actually quite like ick. It's like a worm that will burst into other worms. It's really gross. So there are tons of diseases that I didn't even touch on from the, the eye. It's like there's like a little thing that will live in the eyes of a lot of times you'll see it on tangs or I've seen it on fox faces before. Um, to um, internal parasites and flukes. There's all kinds of things that I did not mention in this, but I hope that the takeaway that you get from this is that you need to be quarantining your fish. Most saltwater fish are wild caught, so they're coming from the ocean, and then not only that, then they're being, ex they're stressed out, then they're being exposed to a bunch of other fish in a few different holding facilities that are also stressed out. So imagine that you have a you're really stressed out, you have a compromised immune system, and then you get in a plane filled with just dozens of people, hundreds maybe, um, and you might not have eaten, you know, your immune system is going to be kind of low, and you do that several times for like the course of a week. Saltwater fish go through a lot before they come to your house. It's really important, really important to medicate them and just be generally aware. So I hope that this video drove that point home for you. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments what are some saltwater illnesses that you don't hear people talk about very often that you've experienced, and do you know any cures? I'd love to hear it. And um, if you're new around here, subscribe, hit the bell, and hit always get notifications if you always want to see it. Don't forget to check out the Fish Fan shirts. Um, it's a 21-day campaign, so hopefully we will sell enough that... Um, the campaign will send. If we don't sell enough, you'll just get your money back. But fingers crossed, we sell enough, and it's a great way to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.